Again, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us for Northern Kentucky History Hour. Um, we have everyone joining us on Facebook Live as well as on Zoom. Um, it is about 6.30 right now, so we will go ahead and get started. I'm your host for tonight, Mary Jane Calderon, and I'm joining you live um, from the Beringer Crawford Museum, and this is my office. And um, Northern Kentucky History Hour is a project of Beringer Crawford Museum, Northern Kentucky's History Museum. So I'd like to start by thanking all of our sponsors. Beringer Crawford Museum is supported in part by the City of Covington, Kenton County Fiscal Court, ArtsWave, Kentucky Arts Council, Northern Kentucky Sports Hall of Fame, the Carol Ann and Ralph V. Hale Jr. Foundation and our members. If you're not a member of the museum, please consider joining for access to discounts and exclusive programming. Learn more and join at bcmuseum.org. Before we begin, let's go over a few reminders. If you have any questions or a comment to share, please type it in the chat or Q&A feature. We will try to get to as many questions as we can possibly immediately following the presentation. Also, there will be a quiz question tonight. The first respondent to enter a correct answer in the chat on Zoom or Facebook Live will win a Northern Kentucky History Hour prize and most importantly, bragging rights. So let's go ahead and meet tonight's speaker. Cora Arney is the Learner Experience Director at Baker Hunt Art and Cultural Center in Covington, Kentucky. She is a graduate of Northern Kentucky University with a Master of Arts in Public History and two Bachelor of Arts in Studio Arts and Anthropology. She previously worked with the NKU Steely Library Archives, Cincinnati Art Museum, the Delhi Historical Society, the Betts House, and served as Vice President of the Museums and Historic Sites of Greater Cincinnati. Her personal mission is to promote the importance of history, art, culture, and creativity in all disciplines. Cora, welcome. Thank if you. you are ready, we can go ahead and get started. All right. Let me get my sh screen shared here. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. And thanks uh, to Beringer Crawford for having us for having me and Baker Hunt Art and Cultural Center uh, give this presentation uh, this evening. Um, so I will go ahead and get started um, with our uh, patriarch of the family, um, John Baker. He um, is the one that originally moved to Cincinnati. Um, he was born in Philadelphia and owned a lighting store with his friend Henry Von Pohl. Um, together, they traveled throughout the Midwest and um, South to find the ideal location for their business. Um, so um, they, like many families within the, um, the early to mid 1800s, were um, looking for the opportunities that the Midwest had to offer with uh, the, ex especially in Cincinnati, the exploding populations around that time. Um, so they um, traveled around looking for the best place for their business and ultimately settled on Cincinnati. Um, their business was originally on 4th Street, uh, down near over the Rhine. Um, you can see what Cincinnati looked like in 1841, which was a, a couple of years after they moved to Cincinnati. Um, they, the ad shows the different types of fixtures they offered throughout their business. Uh, Gaslighting wasn't it, um, introduced to Cincinnati until 1849. Um, and they also sold those fixtures as well. Um, the first storefront was rented from Nicholas Longworth, which was a big name in Cincinnati. Um, and the business ran for about 30 years before they retired and sold the business in 1874. Um, when John first moved to Cincinnati, he went back to Philadelphia briefly to marry uh, Henrietta Potter Adams. 
she um, um, was born in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And when she met Baker, she had been widowed and she already had one daughter um, named Anne when they got married in 1839 and they immediately moved to Cincinnati uh, to run the business together. Her ancestry is very important to our founder as um, I'll mention a little bit later. Um, she was the fifth great granddaughter of John and Priscilla Alden who were May flower passengers and they were very um, influential within the um, Plymouth Rock Colony. And she was also a president, or I'm sorry, a cousin to President John Adams. Hi, Cora. Sorry to interrupt, but I think what we're seeing on your screen, on the screen, is um, we're seeing your both of your slides instead of from the presenter's view. Oh, that's because awesome. we're we're seeing your screen. Are you seeing just Are you seeing just your one screen? No, I have both screens. Hold on. Let me disconnect my second monitor here, and that might help. Is that better? There, yeah, that's much better. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Oh, also, I wanted to mention, um, you might want to say the quiz question. So we have some time right. for people to start answering and see if they might know the answer. Thank so you. So the quiz question is, um, how are Baker Hunt um, and Beringer Crawford connected? Um, so the first one to answer that, I guess, receives a prize. Um, okay. So back to the presentation here. Um, so her uh, family has connections. Uh, her genealogy goes back to the founding of um, the original colonies here in America. Um, and that was very important to the family. Um, so together, um, the um, Henrietta and John Baker had one son, William Baker. Um, he, some people believe he may have been in the Civil War, but I have not been able to confirm this with any uh, documentation. Um, he died very young. He died in 1866 at 25 years old of liver failure. Um, and really the only mention we have of him in any of our archives is that when he was a child, he was involved in an accident. Um, and the first um, executive secretary of the Baker Hunt Foundation said in an interview that um, he was in an accident on a construction site in downtown Cincinnati. Um, and so as a child, um, they took him to the doctor and the doctor prescribed fresh country air. So they moved to Covington um, on Greenup Street. And um, before I move on to that, I did want to point out that this painting of uh, William is uh, painted by Robert S. Duncanson. He is the African American painter that um, painted the murals at the Taft Museum. And his one of his paintings was also featured during the inauguration um, earlier this year. Um, so that's a little interesting uh, Cincinnati connection there. Um, so they moved to 620 Greenup Street on June 24, 1854. Um, this was a such a precious place for the family, and they felt such a special connection to the community that they celebrated the anniversary of moving to Covington every single year. It was also close to Margareta, our founder's uh, birthday. So um, June was just a very exciting month for the Baker Hunt family. They renovated and expanded the house many times over the years. Um, and like I said, they adored the Covington community and they their doors were always open to host parties, uh, dinners, and community groups to come meet um, at the house um, anytime they wanted. Um, they were also very involved with the Trinity Episcopal Church. So now we get to our founder, um, Margareta um, Baker Hunt. She was born in 1845, so she was about nine years old when they moved to uh, 620 Greenup Street. 
And so she pretty much lived her entire, um, with the exception of nine years, um, entire life on Greenup Street. Um, she attended a private school on Greenup Street near Fifth Street. Um, and I love to point that out because one of our community outreach partners is Community Montessori. And they are located around that area. And so it's interesting to me that they walk, when they come to take art classes at Baker Hunt, they walk about the same path that she would have walked um, in the mid 1800s. Um, so it's just one of those ways that history repeats itself there. Um, throughout her life, she was very passionate about education, art, science, psychic research, as I will mention again later, and religion. And she was very determined to share those passions with the community. Um, here are some photos of Margareta when she was younger. Um, the photo on the left is her wedding photo. Um, she married Dr. William Hunt in 1872. Uh, Dr. Hunt was also born in Cincinnati and um, went to, one thing I, I didn't mention about Margareta is she went to boarding school in Philadelphia and stayed with um, some of her aunts. And William Hunt also um, went off to Philadelphia to attend college. So um, a lot of the, some, there's a lot of reflections of moving back and forth between the two cities. Um, but anyway, um, he attended Jefferson Medical College. And while he was there, he became very interested in spiritualism. Um, and um, we'll mention that a little bit as well. Um, he moves back to Covington and opens a practice in 1856, and then eventually uh, marries Margareta in 1872, and they immediately move into 620 Greenup Street. They become head of the household and begin taking care of Margareta's parents. They had one daughter, um, Katie Hunt. She is described as being kind of the life of the house um, throughout her life. Um, sadly, it was a very short life. She only lived 15 years. She died on her 15th birthday of spinal meningitis. And this was a big turning point for the family, um, mostly because um, of the whole spiritualism aspect and how they wanted to reach out to uh, Katie and her grief. Uh, the photo on the left was taken about a year before Katie died at age 14. Um, then uh, this pastel portrait was painted around her death um, as a mourning portrait. And this, it's mentioned in her obituary as a uh, kind of jarring painting um, that you can kind of see into her eyes. Um, and we believe the, the pastel painting was um, referenced from the photo on the left. Um, and then the photo on the right is Margareta around the time that Katie died. And you can just see that she's wearing all black clothing. Um, and she just, she does it, she has kind of a, a sad expression there. So a few slides back, I mentioned that um, one of Margareta's passions was psychic research and her interests began around this time, mostly because of Katie. Um, Dr. Hunt, um, after Katie died, started going across the river to see a psychic because um, he wanted to reach out to Katie and he would come back and tell Margareta all the stories of uh, what Katie said during these sessions. and. Um, then eventually Margareta got interested in it and she started joining him. Uh, Margareta's father did not approve of this at the time, so um, they mostly kept it off site. But eventually, after uh, Henrietta's death, her father wants to talk to Henrietta. So they began um, inviting the psychic to the, the family home. And in the picture you see in the slide here, uh, Margareta is sitting in Katie's former bedroom, which she had turned into a sitting room at that point, and you can see the portrait 
in the um, bedroom because she's kind of dedicated to um, the psychic research. This is where they would come and do the readings. The psychic's name was Laura C. Pruden. She lived in Price Hill. Um, she is known as being a psychic medium to Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Um, he was the author of the Sherlock Holmes series. Um, there are, is also a fascinating article in the Cincinnati Enquirer. Um, if you just Google search her name, uh, Laura C. Pruden and Harry Houdini, it will pop up, but they talk about how Harry Houdini tried to discredit her and wrote all kinds of letters to various people to um, try to convinced them that she was a fraud. And um, there's some very, very neat um, just scans of the letters. So I, I definitely recommend if you're interested in this, uh, looking that up. She specialized in a technique called slate writing and her son invented the concept of the magic eight ball based on her technique. Uh, so there's a, a neat little uh, Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky connection to the magic eight ball there. Um, so in 1890, that's when Margareta's mother, Henrietta, dies, uh, just two years after Katie, her daughter. Um, Dr. Hunt dies in 1893, and the speculation there is that he was a doctor. He was grieving that uh, because he couldn't save his daughter's life being a doctor, um, and he kind of died of a broken heart. Um, and then just a year later, Margareta's father died. Uh, so in a span of six years, she lost um, her entire immediate family, except for her half-sister and her niece, Kate Scudder. Um, and fortunately, by this time, um, they both had moved into 620 Greenup Street. Um, Kate and Margareta, uh, Kate was Margareta's niece. Uh, they were very close. Uh, they were referred to as the twins since they were roughly the same age. And um, Kate was no stranger to traveling. She um, moved to, she was born in Cincinnati, but she moved to Texas until her father died. And then her and her mother moved back to Covington um, to be with the Baker Hunt family. Um, when, after they moved in, Kate joins uh, John Baker right after he retired from the gas lighting business to um, travel around Europe. And she kept very detailed journals. And one thing I um, did want to point out too is a lot of the photos and the documents I'm reference I'm mentioning throughout the presentation are available through uh, Kenton County Public Libraries. Um, genealogy site and the Faces and Places of Northern Kentucky. Um, they have a wonderful website where they've added um, probably even some things from Beringer Crawford. So if you're ever doing research or anything, it's a wonderful place to look. Um, but anyway, if you're interested in the journals, they are digitized on Kenton County Public Library's website. Um, and John Baker also had journals when he traveled um, looking, searching for a place to move the business to before they moved to Cincinnati. Um, so if you're interested in that, those are available as well. Um, after they returned from Europe, Kate then um, dedicated her time to the Covington community. Give the best that you have to the best that you know. Um, Kate was known for saying that um, and believed it. We have a list here of just a, a few <laughs> things that she was very involved with. Um, she founded the Wildlife Preservation Society, which I don't believe exists today. Um, I'm not sure when they disbanded. Um, she was influential in setting up the Carnegie Library and served on their board. Um, that is now the Carnegie Performing Arts Center on Scott um, Street. Um, she was also, uh, she's also known for persuading the Covington Council to accept the VU Park as a donation to the city. Um, she also organized Covington's first playgrounds because her and Margareta both believed that children needed a place to go. 
Um, she served as president of the Diocesan Will, uh, Women's Exal I'm sorry, Auxiliary. Um, and she was in the Church Service League, superintendent of the Sunday School at Trinity Episcopal Church. She was also involved in the Covington Culture Club, Covington Historical Society, and the Northern Kentucky uh, Historical Society. Um, Margareta, on the other hand, she was involved in the community, but she was a she she's known as being a little more um, quiet and opening the house up, just keeping that family tradition going of keeping the house open to community meetings, hosting dinner parties, um, having the grounds open to children to come play and um, just have a place to go in the community. Uh, there's a wonderful article, I believe it's on Kenton County's public or Kenton County Public Library's website as well, um, where she was interviewed about tearing down the house um, to the right of the building here. Uh, you can see a pergola is there in this photo, but there was a building there. Um, and she is quoted as saying it was wicked. Yeah, it was wicked that houses were that close together. And that was why she wanted to tear it down. And I believe she tore down a house on the other side too, uh, to expand her gardens. Uh, they also celebrated all the patriotic holidays by hanging large flags on the front of the building, as you can see in the picture here. Um, one of the flags we still have in our collection, actually we have a few of them in our collection, but one of them, um, was flown over Francis Scott Key's funer funeral service. Um, so that one's an interesting one uh, in our collection. Throughout the 1900s, um, Kate and Margareta visited their ancestral home in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Um, their cousin um, also did not have any heirs. And so when he died, the home was dedicated to a memorial to, uh, to him after his death and was a historic house museum. Um, and so this got Margareta's mind going about what would she do after, where, what would happen to everything she had built and Kate had built uh, since neither one of them had any children, um, what would happen to it all? Um, and so they really liked this idea of uh, leaving it to the community. I mean, they their whole life, they um, left the home open to the community anyway. Why not um, keep it open? Let that be their legacy. So on June 15th, 1922, um, just a little over 100 years ago, um, Margareta signs the trust agreement with the First National Bank, which is now U.S. Bank, uh, and they still maintain our trust today. Um, she stipulates that it, the Baker Hunt Foundation is created for the promotion of education, art, science, psychic research, and religion. Um, she also states that Katie's bedroom is to remain available to Laura C. Pruden for psychic research. In 1929, uh, Margareta had heard that um, a man named Archie Williams had um, a large collection and needed a home for it. So she decided to build him a museum. Uh, it is now, if you've been to Baker Hunt, it's the building we call the auditorium. Um, in 1929, she laid the cornerstone for it. Uh, we. I don't have the photo on this presentation, but uh, we have a photo of her actually putting the cornerstone. And there's a rumor that um, there's actually a time capsule in there. I don't know how we would ever get to the time capsule because it's at the bottom of the building, but um, that's something I've always uh, wondered about is what's in that, that corner cornerstone. Um, it opened as a natural history um, and taxidermy museum in the fall of 1930. Um, it lasted about 20 years and then it disbanded. Um, we know a lot of the items uh, went to the Department of Conservation in Frankfort, Kentucky, but I've also heard people 
uh, say, I don't know if it's true or not, that Beringer Crawford could have some of them and the Cincinnati Museum Center could have some of them, but I've not been able to confirm uh, whether or not uh, that is true. Um, unfortunately, about a month before the museum opens, uh, Margareta dies uh, quietly in her home. Um, immediately, as the trust stipulated, a board of directors is appointed. Her personal secretary, Virginia Reed, becomes the first executive secretary, and Virginia Reed was very close to Margareta. Um, she, there's a book called The Baker Hunt Foundation, um, and the author actually interviews her. Um, and she said that she has fond memories of playing on the property when she was a child. So she had known Margareta most of her life. Um, uh, the first activities after the um, foundation opened in 19, or yeah, 1931. Um, so we will celebrate another 100th anniversary in uh, 20, 2031 um, to celebrate opening the opening of the school because she didn't officially, she still lived in the house. So they didn't have uh, the school officially open. They just continued to uh, allow people to come and um, meet there and the community to come in. Um, but the boys, uh, they were very involved with the Boy Scouts. And um, I believe that probably had something to do with Archie Williams because he was also very involved with the Boy Scouts. Um, the, they also had arts and crafts, music classes. Um, our, the house next door to Baker Hunt um, is it, right now it's apartments, but um, apparently they used to house a, a craft shop within that building too. Um, Baker Hunt has never officially owned that building, um, but one of those apartments used to be a classroom at one point. Um, they had plays and recitals, they had religion classes. Um, they, they carried on the tradition of being a meeting venue, uh, the museum had lectures and they offered leadership classes as well. We've been around so long that we often hear stories from students about how they came to Baker Hunt as a child because their parents came to Baker Hunt as a child and so did their grandparents. Um, and it just kind of became a family tradition for their children to, um, or for the, each generation to go to Baker Hunt. Uh, we also have teachers, uh, one of which I believe has been there for about 10 years. Um, she had um, brought her child to Baker Hunt and now her daughter just graduated with an art education degree and is also teaching at Baker Hunt and at local schools as well. So even our teachers are generational. Um, Today we have over 700 students, uh, 50 instructors, and 125 classes quarterly. Uh, we offer art shows and special events. We have gorgeous historic buildings and grounds, um, and we also are involved in the community. Um, I have a couple of quotes I wanted to share with you that um, some of our students have shared with me. Um, Baker Hunt is a gathering place for positive impact in the neighborhood and the creative opportunities and multiple programming are super. Um, we are very fortunate to have an institution like Baker Hunt in our community. I have friends all over the country who are envious of having accessibility uh, to a wide range of art and other classes taught by highly qualified and effective instructors at such an affordable price. Uh, we appreciate all you do for us. Um, and it's just, uh, we have, we hear so many great things from our students, um, about how Baker Hunt has enriched their life. Um, one of them here is I've been coming to Baker Hunt for two and a half years. I find that Baker Hunt really saved me. I lost my husband. I was kind of lost. I needed something and I wanted to spark. I wanted to spark my juices, my creative juices. So I came here. 
Um, so we find that a lot where people come for the community, come to find their community at Baker Hunt, which is, again, it goes back to what the Baker Hunt family valued, which was having their house and their, what they had available open to the community. These are the groups we are currently associated with, and um, we send, um, we offer about 50 scholarships to people who can afford to come to us but can't afford the fees. And then um, we go to all of these places almost weekly or bi weekly um, to take our programming out into the community to the people who can't come to us. Uh, this is 620 um, Green Up Street today, the uh, mansion that Margareta lived in and the family lived in. Um, the round room here, um, that's what we, we call it is the round room. It is, uh, it used to be, oh, I'm sorry. Um, it used to be uh, Dr. Hunt's office when he moved into 620 Green Up Street. He actually brought his practice to um the the property we have a uh, family history museum and as you can see a lot of the paintings i the portraits i showed tonight are uh from the museum um and we also have a lot of the family archives um stored at on site um, this is what the Archie Williams Museum is today, the auditorium. It is used primarily for um, classrooms. Um, we have concerts in there. Um, it's kind of a multi-use room. Um, th this particular photograph, it's um, a summer camp that is going on in there. Uh, this is one of our more popular spaces, the uh, studio. Um, it's popular because of the lighting that comes in and the view um, from the wall of windows there on campus. Um, in 2019, we began renovating a couple of the buildings. Um, so one of the buildings that um, we that's on the other side of Baker Hunt, I was talking about one of our other neighbors, um, earlier, but on the other side, we have the Scudder House, um, which I believe I have a picture of in here too. Um, and we renovated that building and um, the clay studio here to add a wheel throwing room. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so this is the Scudder House. Um, so when Kate Scudder died in 18, or I'm sorry, 1926, um, she had purchased this house and left it to the Covington Art Club. And then um, around late 90s, early 2000s, uh, Baker Hunt purchased the building from the Covington Art Club. Um, and so we renovated um, the building to add classrooms um, upstairs and we added an industrial kitchen to the end of the building. Um, we currently use the ballroom here that's in the front of the building for art shows and um, various events. Uh, this is one of Cedric Michael Cox's shows uh, that we had back in the fall. Uh, the industrial kitchen, teaching kitchen um, is at the back of the building and we offer anything from date nights, children's programming, uh, cake decorating, um, and we also, I, this past weekend, we had Twilight in the gardens and um, we had all of our chef instructors prepared throughout the week, um, their dishes that they compete, competed in the event and also three won um, Baker Hunt Top Chef. So we do all kinds of fun things with our, our teaching kitchen, but um, it's mostly used for classes. And then just the grounds. It's gorgeous. It's one of those places you can walk on or walk into and find something new every day. I mean, I've been there three and a half years and every day I find a new detail that I didn't notice before um, or a new flower. Um, it's, it's just, we always say it's kind of a, a magical hidden gem. 
can see more of campus there. Um, and that's uh, the end of the presentation there. So if you wanna go ahead and open it up to questions, we can do that. Thank you, Cora. That was beautiful. I love that you said that you were a beautiful, like hidden gem kind of, that's how we like to describe the Behringer Crawford Museum too. <laughs> so thank you so much for that excellent presentation. Um, I wanna first go ahead and go back to the trivia question. Okay. So let's see, let me see what, if you want, okay. How are Baker Hunt and Behringer Crawford connected? So we had some answers. Um, some thought that the museum building the Williams Museum building was now part of BCM grounds. Um, we also, we had the correct winner was Janine Kreinbrink. Um, she said that they helped get Covington to accept the donation of Devoe Park. So um, yes, I know that, um, let's see, Kate Scudder was instrumental in getting the Covington Council to accept Devoe Park as a donation to the city through her persistence and advocacy. So is there any more you would wanna say about that? Um, no, I mean, she just was part of a group of people who were determined to turn, take that beautiful area and the home and make sure that the, Co the Covington community could enjoy it um, just as the Baker Hunt family, it's repetitive in their values of just keeping everything as a place for people in the community to go and learn. Well, we're very thankful that she did. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Kate. Um, let's see, we had some comments. Um, let me see. Blanche said, back when the Cincinnati Museum Center Heritage Program docents were doing haunted history bus tours, Baker Hunt was always a fascinating stop. And the Baker Hunt organization was always very welcoming. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, we have all kinds of stories. <laughs> it's um, I think my favorite what is from a couple of years ago. Um, it was in 2019, we did Twilight in the Gardens, um, our annual fundraiser. And um, one of the museum intern I had at the time, she went upstairs because she knew that uh, that bathroom up there, would, nobody would be in it. So she went up there um, and she said she heard someone say, why are all these people here? And there was nobody upstairs. So we, we hear stories like that all the time. <laughs> okay, so I, I just had another qu a question come up from Laura Bowman. She said, first of all, she said, thank you, Cora. Is the museum on the property open to the public? Um, right now it's only by appointment, uh, but Yes, um, and hi, Laura. Uh, Laura is one of our students. <laughs> um, and so if um, anyone's interested, they can contact us and we can find a time that either myself or another staff member, we also have a, an amazing intern right now named Anna who um, can, would happily be able to set that up. I'd also like to add that Janine also um, said that she took art classes there for several years in the early 1970s. She rode the bus from Ellesmere every week for art classes after school and she loved it. Oh, good. <laughs> so those are great comments. And if anyone has any comments or questions for Cora, please leave them in the chat and um, we'll be sure to answer those. Um, and um, I think it was on a slide a while back, but my email is Cora, C-O-R-A, at bakerhunt.org. We do want any stories or memories you have of Baker Hunt, um, because right now we kind of, we tell our story up in, uh, to the beginning of uh, the school. Now we're trying to get to a point where we can start talking about the history of the school itself because I mean it's uh, been open for 90 years now so um, any student stories we would love to hear them and I went ahead and I put that in the chat too that's cora at bakerhunt.org and photographs we would love to see any photographs you have of um, the grounds or even just the art classes Mm -hmm. Okay, are there any other questions or comments from anyone, any of our participants? 
please leave them here. Or do you have anything else that you'd like to add? Maybe um, how, um, let's see, uh, how did you get, what what drew you to to come to Baker? And you said you've been there for six years or so, or how long uh, did you stay? Three and a half. Um, I was drawn to Baker Hunt because my background is in studio arts, anthropology, and then public history. So it felt like the, the perfect organization because um, it, it has a, a museum that I, I focused on museum studies when I was in grad school. So there was a museum that I could be involved in. Um, it, it encompasses art, uh, which I've, I've been in interested in art since I could walk. <laughs> it's kind of a family generational um, tradition that um, we are very involved in the arts. And then culture through anthropology, it just, um, it encompasses everything that um, I went to school for and everything that I'm passionate about. Um, Donna Bresser said that she heard that classes used to be free. I feel like I saw that on somebody's comment too, that they were very thankful on Facebook, on one of our posts, they were very thankful for the free classes that used to be offered. Yep, they were uh, free up until the early nineties, I think. And then they started charging for them um, just to keep up with costs. Um, and we still offer free cl classes. Right now we have a free fly fishing class, um, which is a very fun. I love watching them practice. Um, throwing the, the lines in our parking lot and like on our ground. So you'll see about a whole class of people pretending to fish outside. And then at the end, wow. they, um, they go out and um, practice fly fishing actually out in the field. So it's, we offer them occasionally. Are there any upcoming um, activities that you'd like to mention that might be coming or that you might wanna promote? for Baker Hunt? Yeah, so we, um, our fall session starts on Monday. Um, we still have some seats available. So if you go to bakerhunt.org and search our catalog, uh, you can still sign up for classes. Um, we have work one day workshops throughout the whole session. Um, a lot of cooking workshops. We have uh, a few, if you're interested in football and wanna up your tailgating uh, recipes, there are, um, tailgating um, appetizer prep classes. Uh, there are also, we have for like pastry classes and different um, clay classes. Uh, we do date nights, both cooking and pottery. Um, and we haven't uh, completely released them yet, but uh, soon we'll be releasing our holiday workshops. So um, I would definitely keep an eye on those. Uh, there will be two nights that we will have um, various um, different crafts that you can make as gifts to give away as gifts. So ornaments, um, uh, Christmas cookies and things like that. Um, so it's stained glass ornaments, clay ornaments, uh, holiday cards. So definitely look out for those. That's awesome. Yeah, I definitely like the date night ideas. I think that would that'd be a lot of fun, a cooking class or tailgating too with the Bengals playing, maybe. That'd yep. be a lot of fun. <laughs> so um, if, if we don't have any other questions or comments, we'll go ahead and wrap up. And let's see, and maybe talk about some promotions of our own here at Behringer Crawford Museum. So um, we are having our first museum cruise in this weekend. So uh, this weekend, Saturday, September 24th, from 11 till 2 p.m., we're gonna have classic vintage and antique car, or classic vintage and antique car owners are invited to visit BCM and show off their rides and receive two free admissions to the museum that day. Guests can take a trip back in time while viewing a myriad of automobiles from years past and learning the history of each one from the owners, car enthusiasts, and collectors. All donations will benefit the educational programming and collections management at Behringer Crawford Museum. This event is free and open to the public, so we're really excited about this. This is our first ever. Hopefully, we'll have many to come in the, in the future. Um, we also are beginning our month-long celebration of photography with our collaboration with Photo Focus. Beginning September 30th, the 2022 Photo Focus Biennial's theme is 
world record, and we are excited to have Faces of the Deep, which includes underwater photographs by our friends John and Martha Lang. This will be on exhibit through October 30th with a special reception we're going to have on October 15th from 2 to 4 p.m. So look forward to that coming soon. As a reminder, our next Northern Kentucky History Hour is going to be on Wednesday, October 5th. That's gonna be all that we have time for this evening. So thank you so much, Cora, for the wonderful, wonderful uh, presentation. Um, and thank you again to all of our sponsors and the supporters of BCM, the staff, trustees, and members of BCM. For more Northern Kentucky history throughout the week, be sure to check us out on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel, where you can find the latest installment of Curators Chat with Jason French. And please like and subscribe. Until then, take care and good night, everyone. And thanks so much again, Cora. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>